minutes. I think I'm gonna do some jokes. Um, so it's really cool doing stand up during Dead Week. I know most people are like out, you know, back home in the library studying for finals, and it's also really cool to have all you guys here because it makes me know you guys must also be tax majors, so you don't have any work either. Um, in all honesty, it's kind of it's kind of weird uh, being a tax major at Stanford when tap is also a thing. Sort of like if I was out in the world and someone asked me what I was studying, it'd be like Olive Garden. Um, it just really throws people off. I also have a minor in human rights, by the way. Um, in all honesty, though, um, I find the the whole uh, uh, techie fuzzy divide. I found that a little confusing when I first came here. With you know, STEM kids are techies, humanities kids are, are uh, fuzzies. But my question was, what about the arts kids? Um, and then about 15 minutes into living in Burbank, I realized, oh, we're fairies. That's what we are. Um, yes, I'm in Burbank. I'm also in Italic which is the year-long integrated, integrated uh, arts program, and it's really fun, but also, no, it's not. Um, I realized right at the end of our first discussion section that italic actually stands for I talk a lot in class. Um, the extroverts are screaming, and the introverts are painters. Um, yeah, um, so being out in Stanford is kind of, uh, on, on the West Coast, it's kind of strange, but the East Coast, um, I'm from Philadelphia, I have two older brothers who, Philadelphia. They're neighbors. Um, yeah, so I have two brothers who went to school in New York, so I spent a lot of time there, and I found something really interesting uh, comparing Stanford to New York, because here, people use LinkedIn like it's Tinder, and in New York, people use Tinder like it's LinkedIn. It's very confusing, you know, a little situation there. Uh, in all honesty, though, I kind of like, I do like being out in California. I always felt a little bit out of place in terms of like how I dressed back home, because I went to a prep school for a long time, so people wore a lot of like Land's End, LL Bean, pretty much everything from the whole Mitt Romney Center collection. Whereas I dress more like an extra from the set of Call Me By Your Name, who got kicked off the set for being too disruptive during filming. So I feel like I'm in the right place now. Um, at this point in my set, I, I want to talk about a side note. This is utterly unrelated, but um, before this set, I, I peed at the bathrooms at, uh, by Treehouse, and the urinals there are the lowest urinals that I've ever seen. One might as well sit to pee, because in either scenario, your balls will touch the floor. And I don't know if this is the D school doing some sort of prototyping or ideating or synergizing, but it hasn't worked. Um, I'm a very nervous peer. I have a lot of pee anxiety. And here's why. Um, thank you. So, with the urinals, there's often three to select, and I often find myself in a predicament in which I enter the bathroom with one other patron, and they immediately select the middle urinal, leaving me stranded and lost and confused. And at this point in my set, I'd like to point out that I am not a fan of puns very much, but I will say that that is a dick move, um, and I don't appreciate it. I also never know where to look when to pee, because you can't look down. That is just a no, you can't look down. But a lot of people seem to look up, like they're at a pew, just like, oh, please, God. Please, God, let it be clear this time. Oh, please don't let it be milk. Um, side note about milk, a lot of people have very strong feelings about milk. You know, they're lactose intolerant. Personally, I'm lactose ambivalent. I go back and forth, I don't really know how I feel. But that's besides the point. Now, the worst group, the worst group who has the worst urinal conduct by far is the children. I don't know who it was who told little boys that they were supposed to pee at the urinal with their pants completely at their ankles. But I sincerely hope that it was their parents. <laughs> Um, are there any parents in the room? Are there? Um, no, yes. Either way, I'm gonna continue on and tell this joke. Um, do you guys mind if I explain where babies come from? Is that alright? Cool. 
Thank you. Um, so are you all familiar with the stork? You know, it's the big bird. It's got your baby. And you're, of course, you're so excited to get your baby. It's a, a stork is a big white bird that holds your baby in its mouth. And then it flaps over. Um, yes, right. Um, so you're so excited to get your baby. And it's a very wholesome image. And the stork flies over. And you're going to get your baby. And it's great. And then the stork comes. And then you fuck the stork. <laughs> and that's where babies come. I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm kind of sorry, that was kind of a sick joke. Those last two jokes were kind of sick. But I don't consider myself a sick person. And that's because I've met the two sickest people in the world. The second sickest person in the world is the person who coined the phrase urinal cake. Um, for context, for those who don't know, urinal cake is this it's this citrus colored patty that sits at the bottom of the urinal. No one knows why it's there. It just sort of lurks. So that's the second sickest person in the world. And the sickest person in the world is the person who approved that as a good idea. I, I have this image in my head of how it all happened. They were just coming from a birthday party, Brad and Steven, and you know, icing on fingers. Brad, like, yeah, you know, Steven, piss patty's just not doing it for me anymore. I think we need a better name. And you know, Brad's like, well, you'll we'll see him. Like, what do you got? What are your ideas? And um, he's still looking all that icing off. He's like, oh, I got it. Urinal cake. And then the other guy's like, that's a fantastic idea. I think you're doing great work. Um, yeah. One more thing before that means this is the last joke I said. Um, I just want you all to know, for this and for future times in my life when I make jokes. I don't believe in punching down, I punch up. And what that means in practice is that I punch a lot of basketball players in the testicles. Thank you all very much, have a good night.